in India. You know, basically, we are all scientists and engineers. What is our job? Is basically, we need to, at the end of the day, try to solve the societal problems. That is important, number one. Number two is, you know, I may say <clears throat> mechanical engineering, but then those days of having mechanical engineering, electrical, electronics, computer, I think no more we can think like that because today all systems, you know, you would have seen simple toys or let us say that you want to go to Mars, say space travel, one end of the spectrum to another end, they are highly multidisciplinary. But at the same time, I want to tell you that in all this multidisciplinary, the core engineering of mechanical engineering plays a very, very major role it plays a dominant role. So that's why even if I tell certain general things, the mechanical engineers have a role to play. Let us take a look at the kind of challenges that we need to solve as engineers in the coming century. Uh, you know, you look at the national perspective, we have problem everywhere, particularly depleting resource base. I'll come to that each one of them what is the role that we need to pay? You know, water, forest, minerals, and agriculture productivity. You know, as a country, basically we are an agricultural country, but then our productivity is very poor compared even to the small, small countries like Vietnam, Israel, and many other things. Why? Because we are not gone into the, what we term as the mechanization. Then of course, the water is one important thing and unless we come out with engineering solution, I don't think you can see that the future generations will survive if you go on depleting the water in the same way. So also energy. So also the natural disasters. You know, our country is a basically geographically very, very widespread. We have a long coastline. Cyclone keeps happening. I think just a few days back it happened. Flood is happening. I think all the northeastern uh, the states are in real trouble. Even yesterday, it was very serious in Mumbai and is continuing. Drought prone at the same time. The seismic zones, you would have heard every now and then, you know, small, uh, the seismic uh, vibrations in the northern uh, India and happens anyway, many, many, many more. And also climate change, that's all. So basically, as scientists and engineers, it is our responsibility to handle what is given down below in green, if you look at it, how do we ensure the food security? It means agriculture, poverty elevation. How do we really see that we are able to share our resources appropriately? Then, of course, infrastructure is something we need to worry. You know, unless we build infrastructure, we will not be able to make any progress. How do we really minimize the disaster and also climate uncertainty? These are all some of the important uh, issues that we need to sort it out at the end. Now, let us look at the, the, how the transformation has happened from the beginning, very quickly. I think all of you know that uh, since independence that we were basically an agriculture society, which means raw material, agriculture products, and we started our technologies. Then from then onwards, we moved on to industrial products, that is industrial society thanks to our first uh, Prime Minister of India, who really invested a lot of money in science and technology. The so-called uh, very many public sector companies came at that time, and that's one of the reasons we are able to really make good progress. And I think all of you know that uh, in the last almost 10, 15 years, the information explosion has come, information society. But then what we need to today worry is, it's not enough to have just information. How do we translate this information into knowledge? I think that's where we all, the present generation, have to worry. And this is how the technology has evolved. Now, the question is, uh, uh, what do we do, really? How do we move? Uh, before that, let us just look at, as a mechanical engineer, what is our role? Of course, we need to initiate the design, development, research, experimentation, which is true in all disciplines, not just mechanical. But quickly you can see that, you know, the, 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 our strength lies in manufacture, installation, 
testing, operation, maintenance, the management of machines, the mechanical, mechatronics, you know, that again, difference has gone. I think all of you know that today, the automation has come in a very big way and wherever you go, people talk about artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, data analytics. I think unless we switch on to these kind of modern engineering, I don't think you will be able to really make progress as you move in, in your career. Then of course, there are important things like heat transfer process, thermodynamics, combustion, because if we talk energy, without that you can't make any progress. Fluid and thermal energy systems, you know, materials and material handling system. Uh, one thing I want to tell to all our young friends that uh, today the technology is limited in terms of growth in any country for that matter is the materials. You know, how do you really come out with the newer and newer material? Today, anything that I want to handle, the limitation is not in anything. It's basically materials. Similarly, the manufacturing equipment and process plants, you know, many of them are really very old and uh, we have to automate it totally. You know, if you really look at countries like Germany and many other advanced countries, they have progressed so much. And at the same time, I want to tell you, don't be under the impression by automation, the jobs will go. No, it's not true because there is many more that you need to do both downstream and upstream. One can go on and on the, some of these things really. Now, uh, let us just look at the, what are these achievements that have happened in the 20th century? Before we look at what are the challenges we have, you know, basically I think uh, as mechanical engineers, we have played a very major role and uh, we have focused on development of machines, advanced materials, analysis, simulation, several tools have come. Then of course the structural disciplines are very, very wide. Anything you take, whether it is a bridge, whether it is road, whether it is machineries, whether it is oil firms, anything you take, basically all these things we need to really analyze ensure that we improve the performance and at this same time safety aspect. You know, many of the plants you keep breeding every now and then getting into problem. I think it is the responsibility of our engineers, particularly mechanical engineers and chemical engineers to see how to bring safety. So ultimately what is that is important is all of us, whatever we do, the research, the implementation, the bottom line is that we must ensure comfort. You know, this is what we say when we talk about sustainability, how do we really elevate poverty? I think we have to really bring in the well-being of the society. I think all of you must be totally familiar today, the revolution which has happened in the telecommunications in the country. Who would have imagined about six or seven years back, the kind of spread which has happened in uh, telecommunications. And today you can't live with that. Maybe you can skip one meal, but you cannot go somewhere without your uh, mobile. You know, that is the kind of transformation it has brought. But then that is technology. Now let us look at the kind of uh, the advancements that have happened or innovation, I would say, because, you know, it's always told that the country which innovates only has the future. Unless, particularly, I want to stress this to our youngsters that uh, please, try to look for innovation. What is innovation? Is basically, how do we bring the value added, uh, you know, effort in anything that we do? Otherwise, basic disciplines remains one and the same. So look at the way in which you have progress, electrification, automobile. We had only just two vehicles, cars in the country, maybe another about 20, 25 years back. Today, you look at that, the revolution which has happened, Aviation, I think I'm very proud to say that our own fighter aircraft is now accepted by the defense space flight. I think maybe we can, because I come from that area, whatever questions you may have, you can pose it later. You know, we have gone to the moon, we have gone to Mars. I know these are all one end of the technologies. Similarly, the situation has improved on water supply, agriculture, air conditioning, household, health technologies. 
when we say health technology, I want to just pause for a minute now when we have this kind of pandemic, are we geared ourselves to meet the requirement? Look at the ventilators, look at the medicines that we should have, look at the, the other equipment that one has to have, like PPEs, many things. And as I mentioned earlier, high performance material and many other areas we need to look. Now with this background, what are we expecting in the 21st century? You know, looking at the various technologies, today three T's are going to dominate. That is biotechnology, nanotechnology, and information technology, generally ter termed as three T's. So we as mechanical engineers should have our hands in some of these areas. Don't think it's only doing just machines and materials, etc. I think the geographical distinction between various uh, different different disciplines have vanished. So if we have to really come out as one of the advanced countries, we need to look at it. The technology development in the next 20 years is really we need to have many, many things like what I mentioned earlier in the areas of drugs in the alternate energy, the cons water conservation, the aeronautics, agriculture machineries, environmental management, all these areas we need to look at it. But then this all demands the modern technologies. I think that's where we have to equip ourselves in terms of computer design, the more and more research in materials, the robotics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology. Of course, each one of them we have to customize and use it in the design and how do we create newer and newer devices? Not only we create newer devices, we also should bring down the cost, that is important. So the areas that we need to give trust in the 21st century is, uh, I think we need to move on from this fossil fuel energy system to the alternate energy. A lot of work is happening, but then, for example, take solar energy, uh, still nowhere near a country like ours, you know, it's, uh, 22 degrees latitude and then uh, the amount of uh, solar energy available, we are blessed with that. But then we, we are not putting it to best use. Similarly, we have abundant coal in the country, but then because of the weather and because of the carbonization, carbon emission, we need to go for clean coal technology. You know, the countries like Canada and uh, Europe, they have done good work. I think this area requires a lot of research lot of thinking which we as mechanical engineers can do that. Similarly, technology is required for water conservation, the cost-effective treatment. You see, look at the waste that goes in back into the earth or elsewhere. And I think we must come out with the appropriate plants along with chemical engineer. It's happening, but then uh, what's happening is only a minuscule. I think we have to do. How do we really recycle it? Then of course, can we make, for example, each of the houses we build, why should we depend on the corporation or municipality to provide the, provide the energy? And can we sort of make it as a, the, what we call greenhouses? That's what we term as the less energy housing technology, efficient cooling systems. And um, also the manufacturing automation. I think we need to enhance our productivity. We are sort of, you know, we ourselves is a big market in the global scenario. It's not enough that we sort of cater to only to ourselves. I think we must become one of the large export countries like China has done. We are far behind in manufacturing. You know, while we made good progress in software, in hardware, particularly mechanical hardware, machinery, you look at the one of the important machinery that is required, you just blink, you try to locate where it's available and try to import that. I think we must come out of that. And uh, you know, the one area which is being talked is uh, the, how do we really fill the gap with respect to the energy? The hydrogen fuel by splitting water in the presence of nanomaterial. Can you see that the link between nanomaterial, splitting the water, because water is abundantly available. Can we really come up with as hydrogen as one of the fuels? Similarly, the I think for a country like ours, where we face several healthcare problems, 
I think one thing is, you know, you all know that in the pharmaceutical sector, we have taken the lead. In fact, almost 60-65% of the drugs that are being uh, needed by the world are produced in India. I think we must be happy about that. But that's not enough. I think we must do more and more research because we have a tremendous engineering talent. But what is more important is how do we really bring the production plants where it can come out. You know, when we talk about the quantity, it's not even in millions, it's in billions, not only for our use in the country, but we must be able to export. And in, in this area, we have done reasonably well. So if you ask me, as mechanical engineer, whatever is applicable, what are the areas that we need to prioritize? One is energy, you know, solar. Solar, why I am saying is, you know, look at the efficiency today, this so-called solar cells. It is nowhere near what one would have liked. And uh, renewable energy, you know, we talk about wind energy, we talk about tide energy, we talk about fuel cells. Wherever you go, what is limiting is the, the clear understanding of the system, the basic materials, and the efficiency with which we can do. I think we need to concentrate on this. And healthcare, I already mentioned, for example, you know, in the beginning, we didn't have ventilator. Why should we really blink when there is an issue? Can you not think ahead? And then, you know, that's what China did. In fact, we should look at, you know, for example, uh, uh, the oxygen systems. There are very many, what you call, invasive instrumentation required for medical. Are we really looking at it? I'm going to give one or two examples. Sometimes it can be done very easily too. Manufacturing, you know, rapid prototyping, large scale production, come out of the conventional to unconventional machining. Many have come, I think we need to look at it. So also nanomaterials and advanced technology, computer and information science, you know. Today, I think I want to highlight this, that the computer and information should become part and parcel of mechanical engineers. No more you should think that I'm only a mechanical engineer and think without having the full knowledge of today, even young kids, you know, my own grandkids, they use so much of computing, they know so much more. In fact, whenever I have some serious problem, I go to them just about eight or 10 years, but then they do wonders. And agro machineries, you know, we are still in the stone age. The poor farmers, they are not able to really be, because the labor has become very difficult, it is expensive. Can we come out with machinery? It's happening. And food, you know, the, in the recent uh, uh, budget, I think uh, our honorable finance minister has announced that we should be able to move the food delivery to anywhere to anywhere. But that requires preservation, that requires transportation, that requires processing. Again, all our job. And of course, uh, material goes without saying there is a number of materials that we can do both uh, metallic, non-material, low temperature, high temperature, nanomaterial, many, many things that one can think uh, on a continuous basis. You know, what you see in this particular slide is the grand challenges in India. This has been identified by the government of India. What happened was that, uh, you know, in the United Nations, they came out with the 10 grand challenges for the 21st century. In fact, uh, that was also supported by the, uh, the National Academy of Engineering of US. And uh, here also, you know, the different academies, what we have in the country in terms of engineering, in terms of science, in terms of medical, I think we joined hands and uh, we, we sort of identified a few areas which are required for the country to progress, country to become an advanced nation. If we don't really look at it and do something on our own, it's no use. You know, as scientists and engineers, we must always keep back of our mind what is the solution that we can offer to anybody, to the common man, to the society, and to the country. Of course, I already mentioned, but then when you talk about solar energy, we have to bring the cost down. If you don't bring cost down, it's not again reachable to the, the downtrodden and poor. There is no point in just showing something in the lab and not able to reach out to the, the general, the mass across the country, clean water and health already I mentioned, better medicines. You know, today medicines, some of them are available, but very expensive. Can we really, of course it's happening in India. I'm happy about that. But at the same time, I think it will be our responsibility. The, 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 the 
health care is not reaching the poorer class because the cost is involved. I think we have to do that. Of course, you know that, uh, you know, Dr. Kalam, I think I was very fortunate uh, to have worked with him almost 16 years at uh, uh, Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, Tiruvananthapuram, and uh, we learned many things. And uh, he used to tell always, strength respects strength. What is strength? That's why I moved to DRDO. He sort of brought missiles, then he brought the, what you term as the nuclear weapon. So we need to bring advanced weapon. Look at the cost today. I think everything we are importing, A to Z. And now only it's happening. That's why I'm saying in the 21st century, we must stop importing the weapons. I think we must produce in the country and we must be exporting into the other country because we are, you know, very, very cost effective a country. For example, many of you may know that the launch vehicle that the country has developed, a polar satellite launch vehicle, in which I was very deeply involved, we not only developed and to our amazement today, so many countries are standing in the queue to launch their own satellite using our vehicle. And we have launched more than 200 spacecraft from 135 countries, which includes US, Germany, UK, many other advanced countries. They are coming to that because we are able to do at low cost. That's why I'm saying that if we are able to develop successfully, I think we become one of the big exporters. I think we need to look at it very carefully. And of course, virtual reality is coming in a big way because many of the things you can simulate, you can test and with the advancement of computer speed and all that, we can do that. Hydrogen, I already have mentioned. Then of course, cyberspace, you know, the Honorable Prime Minister has announced the digital India and how will it happen unless you have a secure cyberspace? This has become one of the very major area where we need to concentrate and look at it. Then of course, Reducing the atmosphere carbon. I think all of you know that global warming is a big threat. It may not be for us, but our future generation. I think you take one, two generation for every one degree rise in the, the global uh, warm temperature, you know, sea level rises. It is, in fact, told that many of the countries will go under the sea over a period if we don't take care of that. Now, I want to stay for a one minute, you know. You, you might wonder that you keep on talking many things, you know, like this, each one of them I can give, but then for one of time, I have just uh, uh, selected one or two areas. Look at that. Solar energy, if you are able to do, provides 10,000 times energy that is needed on the planet. So that's why, you know, how do we really look at it? How do we capture it? How do we convert it? How do we store it? I think these are the areas that we need to look at it. Then, of course, the use of nanocrystals, lead and selenium, they push the efficiency when we talk about the basic material. So we have to think in one direction. And, you know, it's told that materials, when I mentioned earlier, materials stick in one dimension. This is all about, I'm talking about solar cell only, for absorbing the sunlight. And in the other direction, it has to be thin because for charges to travel is the one of the solutions. So these are the things that we need to look at it very carefully. And I've talked about other materials, you know, for example, when we use the solar power, we also need the items like capacitor, superconductors, many of them for power storage. How do we really do that? Then we can also seriously consider to use the sunlight for electrolysis of water, generating hydrogen, powering fuel cells, many things. They are all just being talked and little research is going on. But I can tell you many times the so-called fictions will become reality. So these are the challenges I'm going to offer to our youngsters. Please choose the area that you like. Uh, and also, you know, many of you, I would suggest that don't look for uh, hunting for the job. I think you become the job provider. Don't go for job seekers today. In the country, tremendous amount of support is being given for the startups. I think you have to think at this point of time, what is that I can lay my hands and how I can get started? And you have to take risk. You know, it's not that if you don't take risk, you will not be able to really go further. Then, of course, the splitting the water so that hydrogen is taken out is another area. Then, of course, how do we really improve the efficiency for using in the 
advanced engineering technologies. I think these are the ones we need to look at it. Now, you know, societal problem. I think as engineers, there are many examples I can give maybe during discussion we can do. You know, I was just in IIT Mumbai some time back and then uh, uh, I was listening to their own innovations. I was one of the judges there and uh, there were many, many important and uh, uh, elegant solutions on many of the problems. You know, one of the students, he was uh, talking about incubator. You know, incubator is needed if for the premature uh, birth, if the child is born premature, what happens is the, the comfort of what was there in the mother's womb is not there and suddenly comes into the world and then many of them, they won't survive. And it's very common. And in bigger cities, yes, we have hospitals, we have facilities and maybe uh, you can afford that also. His, his worry was, how do I really deal? How do I really cater to the rural folk? You know, what he did is he was inspired by the bag type called water eater. Many of you may be knowing when you get some pain here and there, you take the hot water bottle and use it and you know how it works. So what he did was he sort of took the same concept. It requires some kind of uh, what material that you need to use. Then what kind of smart sensor, because you know, you need to look at the temperature sort of always falls within certain range. It should not become too high, then the baby will be in trouble. It should not be too low, then also in trouble. So you must have sensor with sensors and then triggers, you know, to do that. And of course, the uh, he sort of built using these kinds of things and then it was very effective. He was telling me that it costs around uh, 6,000. It's, it's he's a mechanical engineering student. He interacted with the other disciplines and it's very easy to operate. You know, you the, 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 you have put three lights and then the one which goes above certain temperature, it gives the one light, below certain temperature, it gives another. You need to adjust and then adjust, you know, the manually you put the water uh, to adjust that. Successfully tested and he was telling that uh, he is going to go and then have a tie up with one of the local industries and so that he can promote the industry also and produce in large number, reduce the cost and very useful. This is just one example, maybe you can discuss the during. Now, you know, if I don't mention industry four, when you talk about uh, 20th century, 21st century, I think we will not make any problem. So industry one, you, many of you will know, but then uh, for the benefit of people who do not know, students who do not know, I think end of 18th century, it was industry one, basically all mechanical product, uh, production, water and steam were used. Then of course, we moved on to the electrical energy. That is the beginning of the 20th century. And of course, uh, through the use of electronics and IT, we made industry three. But uh, today, I think uh, we're, we're, we're based on the, uh, what we term as the cyber physical systems, uh, you know, industry four has come in a big way. And uh, what it means, it again has removed the physical barriers. And you must have a good knowledge of uh, cyber and physical system. When I say that, the question again comes that, uh, uh, what is that we are meaning in when you talk about cyber? Can you see that CPS is called cyber physical system? Basically, the computation, the communications, control. You can see that between communication and computation, cyber, between computation and control, physical systems. So, in fact, this is the combination of computation elements, they control the physical entity. Uh, today, I think I will show you in the next next slide what are the elements which have come. They are all operational also in some many other places, really. <laughs> the, the operations are to be monitored, controlled and integrated by a computing and communication co core. That's one reason I think I mentioned earlier, don't ever think that as a mechanical engineer, I am not really going to spend time on computer or information. I think you will not be able to make progress. Uh, you know, there is also what is termed as the uh, T technology. Uh, I think it's a good, good word. I generally use it. What it means is, uh, you know, in T, you sort of have a depth that is the vertical line where you gain knowledge, deep knowledge in one particular area. While you do that, in a multidisciplinary world, it's also important to have the horizontal spread. 
in the sense that you must know as much more required in other area so that you are able to build systems and you will be successful so it is extremely important for us to really understand and try to merge the knowledge of uh, you may not be able to design but you are able to understand what your friends are going to offer and tell now look at these are the things which have come really in a big way all the agglomeration of these various things autonomous robots simulation simulation because you cannot spend time energy and money by by buying things putting together seeing it fast i think you have to generate a very good the simulation systems <coughs> then it's also important to have the not only vertical system integration horizontal which is what i meant how do we understand the various other disciplines and try to bring together as well look at the vertically industrial internet of things i think it has come in a big iot what we term cyber security I mentioned additive manufacturing has really revolutionized the modern manufacturing augmented reality big data you know today anything you touch it's a huge huge data you can't handle it but if you really understand the analytics big data analytics you can do wonders i think you can really take it much more effectively so now what is important is you know the the what is the robots for example you know, i mentioned it this how do you use this is just another example i think all of us know that it's used in industry hazard the environment deep undersea many many places we can use the question is that uh, uh, you know it's also possible to utilize it very effectively in many of our day to day life i think this is one place i think where uh, what we call mechatronics plays a very dominant role and uh, both hardware software they go together and uh, once you do that it also becomes important for us to handle the data so the future application you know is basically what you call humanoid also human friendly robotics uh, many of you might think uh, you know what is this guy talking and uh, uh, maybe after another 5 years you yourself will remember me and realize that uh, uh it is is important for each one of you to look in this direction and uh, today every you know for example internet of things today i can do everything sitting in one place and control what all happens in my house so that is what we call the 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 modernization and uh, humanoid technology made remarkable achievements that is you know it's extremely difficult to bring a technology just like i move my hands with fingers and so many joints you know this is something if you are able to do this i think that is one end of the spectrum of the technology it's an effective human interface device with several application ideas you know that they can communicate with humans i think you would have seen couple of uh, such things which are coming in that tv time to time and also you can sort of train them that's where artificial intelligence comes and bring out all activities but you can be certain that you know they will never overcome the human intelligence it is just not possible actually so i think we must judiciously see how to utilize them for the benefit of the people benefit of society benefit of production these are the things that we need to do very uh, effectively actually now let us just look at what is needed for sustainable solution you know one thing i would like to mention is that uh, there is no point in uh, doing something which is not sustainable i think as scientists engineers we must think that whatever you do should not become a, like a surge and stop there i think we must come out with the uh, the newer devices newer techniques to meet the demand but then what is much more important is uh, uh, it should lead uh, to to improve the quality actually okay are you able to hear me hello uh, we are able to hear you audible okay so suddenly i got there is some confusion there. okay now you know what is important is how do we really ensure that sustainability meeting the environmental pressure i have talked to you you know about many many shortfalls many many depletion and the environmental temperature rising technologically whatever we are doing we must keep track of what impact it will have elsewhere if you don't do that 
do one good thing, there are two bad things which will happen. I think that's where we need to ensure that uh, the adverse effects are removed and at the same time it helps the economic growth. And of course, uh, many of you may know that uh, system design. When we talk about system design, I mentioned to you that uh, they are all uh, multidisciplinary and uh, also many of them are large scale systems when you talk about, you know, today, the simple toy that you may bring to uh, any of the kids, I think they are all multidisciplinary. It's called large because it has the mechanical system, it has the small chip in that, it has the electrical connection, it has a remote that's a communication, everything is there. And to really make it rugged and work, to, to, to have a very, you know, it should also, for like our mobiles are designed for very many uh, drops, you know, still it will function, it will not go bad. Same thing has to happen with toys. But at the same time, you have to bring down the cost. So there, there, there are issues like this. Then, of course, uh, we also have to look to have the very good collaboration between various institutions, both nationally and internationally. And uh, we have to give highest priority for emerging 3T technologies. I mentioned to you bio, nano information. Then, of course, ultimately, that we need to give engineering solutions to meet them cost effect. That is very important. So, you know, training youngsters, what is important is, I think we need to, I, I can tell you that as uh, founder director of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, I took a stand that uh, they said our faculty members, sir, these are all undergraduate students, they can't do research, we need uh, graduate students. I contested, I told look, uh, young students are more innovative, more knowledge, only you empower them, Enable them, they will do that. That's why I put from second year onwards. I, I can tell you for sure, you really take that youngsters in that uh, young age and then guide them. They are willing to take risk. They are very innovative. They can do. That's what is important. I think if you get a chance, please do that. And, uh, you know, they, they also have a lot of ideas. Uh, particularly, you go to school kids and then... Uh, uh, sort of give them some certain problem, they come out with solution very quick. So even it can be a competition, you, you should try to do that. Then another thing I want to mention is that as engineers, I think we look, look at more and more societal problems. Uh, there are very many, you know, if we just get out of your house, walk through about one kilometer, keep your eyes and ears open, you find n number of issues which require solution. Maybe we can discuss in some of the uh, later, so research and innovation. Then of course the student should visit R&D institution and industry because you know it's like a rote learning. You are never exposed to what is required as, uh, as uh, industry people really. That's one of the big gaps that we have in this country. And try to you know, influence your own faculty members and ask them to create some kind of innovation, either center or cell or whatever you want and one faculty in charge and give some kind of freedom to the student, they would do wonders. That can be done actually. Then of course, try to bring experts time to time, particularly on the lectures in the specific challenging areas linked with your own syllabus, so that you appreciate and understand of course. Then it's important in each of the institute like yours, you should have the incubation task, whatever one can do, and tie up with the industry, tie up with the academia, one can do wonders. So with this, I come to the conclusion, I think I promised you I would complete. You know, the challenges are very many, not only exciting, there are quite a few things. And uh, mechanical engineers play a very dominant role and they are fundamental. Without mechanical engineers, no system can be built because, you know, like a body has to come from mechanical engineers, machineries, and, but then those days of building rugged, expensive, costly, heavy, those days have come. How do we really come out with the solution? Then of course the solutions have to meet the societal needs. Then only it becomes useful. Then only it becomes sustainable. And what is more important is, you know, for us, many times we come out with the engineering solutions, but then it's too late. I think we should have the right engineering uh, intervention and right solution at the right time. If you don't do that, it's not going to happen. The bottom line is we should have a strong research and innovation ecosystem in the country that can happen only through youngsters like you working in engineering colleges. I think you must take it forward. 
try to nourish and grow it as much as you can. Then of course, uh, the mechanical engineering, I want to tell you, is very vital. And if we really want to meet the grand challenges of the country in 21st century, you have a big role to play. And before you play that big role, I also want to mention that, you know, challenges, the moment challenges come two ways, there are two ways of looking at it. One is take it right uh, in the front, like a bull, you know, by the arm or run away. I think don't do that. You take it, you know, challenges are always opportunity and catch them young because young people are, that's why I said challenges are always opportunities. I think we must jump at the challenges and then play it as an opportunity. So with this, I will stop and uh, maybe we can spend more time.